not a secondhand coat. I want a yacht, not a cheap little boat. I tell my daddy not to be depressed. All I need for happiness is the best. I want a dime and nothing else has a peel. And when it comes to men, you know how I feel. I want a real man. Give me a real man, you know what I mean. I want a real man. Oh, real man, you know what I need. Hey, what's up? Tim. What's up? Welcome to Real Men. I'm your host, Tim Steves. This is the men's magazine for men, about men, where men get real. Really real, damn it. Let's see what we've got on the menu today. We're serving up a little bit of the Ryan Belleville. That's right, hot and steamy. <laughs> nice to see you, man. Also, Anne-Marie Scheffler is on the menu today. Nice to see you, Anne-Marie. Nice to see you. <laughs> and John Paul is here. How are you doing, JP? I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> and Tim Riker popped in. Good to see you, Timmy. I'm surrounded by fools. <laughs> yeah, well, what are, you gonna, what are you gonna do? Hey, we're gonna start this episode with a little commentary from Tim Riker. Take it away, Timbo. Thanks, Tim. <clears throat> I'm filling out a little in my uh, adult life, but I've always been known as a skinny man, except back in high school. Back then, I was scrawny. What's the difference, you say? Skinny is when you're a very thin person. Scrawny is when you're a very thin person and people beat you up all day long. I was scrawny. We're talking bullies today on Real Men, and, uh, well, they say how you deal with a bully is to stand up to them. Let me tell my little story. Ryan McDougall was the bully in my school. And, uh, well, he wasn't the bully. There were other bullies, but he was the one that made me his bitch. <laughs> Ryan was a mean bastard. He teased me endlessly. It went on and on. I complained about this. I was given the advice, you know what, Tim? Stand up to Ryan. Tell him what's what. And you watch, Tim. He'll back down. So I didn't take that advice right away. I thought, I don't know about that, until one day I snapped. It was after gym class. We were in the locker room. We had just showered, and uh, Ryan was teasing me as usual about what? I don't know. And I was putting my underwear on, and I got one leg in, and I was just about to put the other leg in, and aren't I just a sitting duck right here? So Ryan comes up, pushes me over. I'm off balance. I fall down all naked and stuff. Everybody's laughing, and I snapped. I got up then, and I decided, now's the time. I screamed at him, I ran at him. He looked afraid of me, although I think it might have been just because I was naked and crazy. <laughs> but I told him what's what. I screamed at him and I said, you know what, that's it, mother. That... And I said another word. But I said, that's it, man, you're not doing this to me again. Every time you do this, I don't care if I win or lose, it's gonna be a fight for you, it's gonna be a hassle for you. And I made it a hassle for him. Three weeks later, I was given the very good news by the doctors that they had located my underwear and had booked an OR room for the next day to extract it from my ass. Does standing up to the bully work? Not for me. I'm sure it might in some situations, but it did not work for me. So what can we do about bullies? Nothing. They win this round, OK? It works that way. You can do nothing. But maybe you can win in round two. Cut to a couple of years ago. I'm walking down the street, down Young Street, just finished eating at a restaurant. And I hear, can you spare some change? I look down, and isn't it Bobby McDougall? I laughed at him, told him, no, Bobby, I can't spare some change for you because I'm Tim Reichert. And then he beat the hell out of me. Tim? <laughs> I thought dude's name was Ryan. I'm all confused, Ryan. man. Anyway. Good Bobby job. Ryan. The yeah, I mean, his name was Bobby Ryan. Is <laughs> <laughs> good job, Timmy. So uh, let's start this with uh, that little sprite over there. What do you think, man? I was beaten. Lots. I was mocked. Uh, really? Yeah, it's hard to believe. I, I was mocked, and actually, I remember when I was like 13, I went away for the summer, and I came back, and I was one of the biggest kids in the class. And then, of course, everybody else caught up and surpassed me within a month. But for that month, <laughs> I was king. Wow. But the rest of the time, mocked. But, but I got to see my bully, like the worst kid in the school, get the crap kicked out of him by uh, like a big old nerd who just became huge by the end of junior high. And all the nerd it was like a movie, all the nerds were gathered around chanting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was wicked. Yeah. That's yeah. The, that's, and that's that probably, awesome. not to jump the gun on our whole message of the segment, but I think that is the message, Ryan, that there's always gonna be someone bigger and badder than you. And I have the same story in my hometown where this one guy kicked everyone's ass for years and years, and then one night I watched his head get put through a windshield. Wow. And that might have been a little bit too much, but after years and years, it, you know, that's what can happen. Yeah. But aren't windshields 
shield's really hard. To That's you? the thing, oh. Terry. Yeah, <laughs> face first. I think bullying has is, is got a lot to do uh, in the guy's world. I mean, there's not a lot of bullying between women, although women, girls, can be cruel. And I, I have to sadly admit that I was a... I was a cruel, like, 12-year-old. I was just, oh, my God. I would just... Were you a bully, Anne Marie? I was a bully, but, but not, like, um, not like physical. I, I couldn't fight to save my life. I still can't fight to save my life, but... You just stole everyone's man, didn't you? But, well, no, it's, I... but I hate to say, it's a harsh, harsh world. And in some <laughs> ways, it's almost good to get used to... Because I learned how to survive. And it doesn't matter what... I was called fat stuff, and I was pretty small. You know, like, it just... It doesn't matter what happens. They'll... Find a way to mock you, and like, and that happens in the real world too. You're kind of crapped on. So. Have you ever like, been bullied, of, JP? I was just about to say, like, what kind of neighborhood did you guys live in? <laughs> <laughs> Ryan or Bobby, the homeless dude beating up on little yeah. Kenny Riker. And, and well, actually, I had you a grew lot out of, of for being uh, fat, and they uh, used to pick on your big fat ass. And, <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> and who were you, JP? Were you the bullier or the? No, what? you know what? Uh, Ryan asked me about that, and uh, in all honesty, I mean, I. I uh, well, I don't even want to say it's a gang. It's just my boys. It's a gang, yeah, my, my boys. boys. Give me a ring out. And uh, I was athletic enough. I wasn't the most athletic dude, and uh, but I was funny enough and humorous enough that, uh, I mean, we watched each other's back, man. There was no time and, and, and chance in hell that anyone was... Like, the one bully that tried to bully some dudes, and I was telling this story earlier, if you all don't mind, his name was Jeff Valiquet. This kind of... He was a chubby dude, but he was a... Uh, deceptively quick and strong fat dude. <laughs> and, uh, he used to beat up all the kids, and one time, like, four of our, me and uh, three of my other boys, we followed him home, and we pulled a wolf pack on him, man, and uh, we surrounded him. Because he used to beat up on a lot of kids, and, and a lot of kids come come, jump back and kick my ass. And I'm like, what, the fat dude? And then, so we surrounded him, and then... Uh, we okay, so basically, him in the back I'm, and I'm the only person here... Payback. I'm the only person here who's, like, admitting to being a bully. Aren't I? And, well, you're the and only I'm cruel person no, no, on the I'm panel. Really cruel, but I'm going to tell you what it's from. It's it's like it's the sphere of change, right? You you you're a bully because you don't want anybody to usurp your alpha female position, right? It's like it's about not wanting change, and it's about you know. See, I never had the alpha. It's too much GI Joe in your life. Well, I'm afraid. I I know what panel. Happens. You know what? Alpha I want to I want to cut it off. That was a nice panel on bullying, but we have more fun than that on Real Men. When we come back, we're talking oh fantasies, God. and we're going to be joined by a professional dominatrix, Miss Barbara Fish. So stay tuned. Enough with the bullying. Let's move on to something more fun. Yeah. Let's get bullied professionally. Let's get yeah. bullied professionally. Welcome back to the show. This segment, we're talking fantasies. And we're joined by professional dominatrix, DJ, and performance artist, Miss Barbara Fish. Thanks Hi for there. coming in. My pleasure. That's great. And to get the segment kicked off, here's Ryan Belville. Go ahead, man. All right, well, I'm talking about men's fantasies. Well, there's lots of kind of fantasies that we all have. Personally, one fantasy I have is of the Flames going all the way this year, but uh, I'm not going to pitch a tent over a sports team winning. So what are my kind of sexual fantasies? Well, uh, I... Who knows? I think a lot of men and people in general don't want to tell people their fantasies because they hope that they would come around organically and naturally, like porn. That's right, that somebody would actually be like, what do you mean you can't pay for the pizza? And then, bow, or, you know, the bank teller's beautiful, and she says, you're overdrawn, and you're like, overdraw this, and then you have sex on the counter while everyone watches. We want our fantasies to be acted out, and we have very active imaginations. Some people want to be uh, tied up and have their testicles spanked or burned with a cigarette. Other people just want somebody to be gentle. And I personally right now would like to believe that all the women who are watching this television station are in nurses uniforms, very dirty nurses uniforms covered with mud from the wrestling pit they just climbed out of. But that's just my fantasy. What about you, Tim? Wrestling nurses, dude, and yeah, mud, man. and then testicles burnt with a cigarette? You sick little bastard. Okay, <laughs> let's get the segment going here. Thanks for coming mm -hmm. in, Miss Barbara Fish, first My of pleasure. all. Professional dominatrix. Mm -hmm. You deal in fantasy, obviously. Absolutely. What are some of the most common ones you hear? Well, I think some of the most common ones deal with things like old-fashioned spankings, whether those are hand spankings or with a paddle or a brush. A lot of uh, fantasies... Uh, exist around bondage, whether those are kinds of medical bondage scenes where someone might be strapped down to a nurse's medical table or a surgeon's table or Some in a gurney cage. action. 
Yeah, yeah gurney action, <laughs> for sure. Or in a cage. Um, some people have fantasies, which are really specific. One of the most bizarre fantasies I ever dealt with was one fellow who wanted to fantasize about being a bull, and I had to be the matador, I guess the matador ass. Right. I had to wave a red cape at him. He wanted to charge, and he wanted the sensation of his horns hitting something, so I had to come up with a very controlled uh, situation which would not produce a concussion in him because I didn't wow. want any kind of physical damage or repercussions coming back to me, but he ba was basically charging at a wall which was behind this red cape. Oh. Wow. I had to stick him with st spears, which were not actually spears. They were. So did you have to come up with all the props and everything? Uh, yeah. And the logistics, that, the choreography exactly, and everything? Exactly, the whole oh. choreography. Wow. But he had this, How much I don't did you know. pay for that, John Paul? <laughs> 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 that's our old standard joke on real men that's, now. That's, that's so weird. Like, I mean, I, I don't see who would want to get hit with like a brush. That reminds me too much of childhood getting beat with a brush. <laughs> but that's the and a you thing. Like some people. Like yeah. I can't, I can't walk by a hot track set, you know, like a Hot Wheels track set without bursting into tears. <laughs> <laughs> <beating. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> that you would just scare me, me bringing that up. Hot Wheels track. All oh, right. <laughs> I get all. Wow. Some of us have our most primal urges developed in childhood. I mean, for example, a foot fetish. When you're crawling, for some children, I suppose, crawling around on the floor, staring at glamorous, high heels, shiny boots and foot shoes. Foot fetish. Can you really get a shot of those Anne Marie boots? Look at those exactly. Anne Marie boots. People have right a foot fetish? Really? Yeah, some, is... I think it, it has to do, I've read psychology texts on it, where it's, there's something about the shininess of right. the leather uh, interacting with some portion of the brain and producing very, very infantile erotic response. Wow. Well, how about role playing? To me, my exactly. fantasies include role playing, you know, and yeah. mine too. And I love when you like get a six and then you get to kill their orc and you stab them. No, honey, different kind of role playing. Oh, yeah, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Imagine the kind of role, right. yeah, the only role playing, I, I want to be a guy someone's having sex with. That's the role I'd like to play. Exactly. I mean, keep it simple, you know. It's a good role. It's a good role. role playing. But, I'm going to start we'll slow. A lot of people have role playing fantasies also around the daddy or the right. mommy or someone was a naughty little girl today. Well, yeah, Wasn't she the spank thing. spank? I like right? I like play. I like That's... you like, baby, let's pretend you got a job. <laughs> <laughs> let's pretend you're coming home from work. My wife likes to play that job. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of role playing what, what I like to play that job. So what's the most common uh, like fantasy all oh. around? I mean uh, like uh, the spanking you said is that, but like... I would say if I were going to make a generalization like that, it would be a power exchange. Uh, Hence people, the role playing. Role playing Teacher, people, student. Whether that's giving up control or taking control, I think the most common fantasy in my experience is people liking to play with power. Power is sexy. I mean, why else do we fetishize? Or, I, a lot of women fetishize men in business suits. You, you know, like this is it's a symbol of power. Um, you get a business suit and a gun. <laughs> do you have any, um, Give me your wallet. Do you have any clients <laughs> who are like who you've gotten to know over a little while, and they want like surprises and organics? And say, mistress, please just surprise me. Yes. Oh, yes. Though that is such a pleasure. That's where I really get to explore some of my own interests and desires with someone entirely new, and where I can be really creative. That's where you know, sometimes erotic shaving can come in well, or some good, medical that, that, that makes me think of where does your excitement, uh, yes. how does your excitement work into this, yeah. mm -hmm. Barbara? Where, you know, how does, does your excitement play a role in all this? Absolutely. Or you're you're I, not just at work, you're... No, this is a lifestyle for me. Wow. Uh, you this discounts is, then if, if, if I say, hey, carte blanche, whatever you want, then I, that's cheapy for me, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get out of here. We've got to sell some stuff. We're coming right back. We're joined with Ms. by Miss Barbara Fish, professional dominatrix. We've been talking fantasies, and when we come back, we're going to talk aphrodisiacs. Do they really exist? Stay with us. Wow. Think aphrodisiacs exist? Oh, yes. Yeah. What, what kind oh, do you believe? No, Nova. Chocolate. She's an aphrodisiac chocolate. herself. Chocolate <laughs> in general. <laughs> Just chocolate. Anywhere, any kind, it's good. It's good. Bye. Big hand for the band, because <laughs> that's pre-recorded. Anyway, welcome back to Real Men. We're talking aphrodisiacs this segment. We're joined with by Miss Barbara Fish, professional dominatrix. Do you think aphrodisiacs do exist? Absolutely. Sometimes those aphrodisiacs are solely in the mind's eye, and some of them I really do believe have physiological properties. Absolutely. Like oysters. Oysters. I chocolate. 
chocolate, has pheromones in it. A lot of raw fish just has such a... That's the texture, too. It's a fleshy. The texture, but also such an abundancy of trace minerals that it does produce a physical rush that we are often unaccustomed to. Hmm. A lot of oils, like rose oil, neroli, tangerine, um, even patchouli, those kinds of oils have a kind of soothing and often energizing effect mm -hmm. also. Interesting. And green M&M's, I think, is a... Green M&M's. Yeah, scientifically yeah. proven. That's, they've got the chocolate in them. Yeah. yeah. The only aphrodisiac I've ever found that really works is the diamond ring. That. Oh, that is such <laughs> Guaranteed. <laughs> the only aphrodisiac that works for me is, yes, I'll sleep with you. Really? Well, that <laughs> works for me. But aphrodisiacs don't necessarily have to be ingested. An aphrodisiac can also be something which has to do with in the environment, whether that's, you know, suggestive lighting or music, uh, music or right. even, you know, a Negroes. something if somebody says, <laughs> of, yeah. you know, Negroes. What did you say, JP? Ne Negroes. <laughs> right, just black guys on the set. Aphrodisiacs, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> just a black man in the house is an aphrodisiac. <laughs> I think for a lot of people also an aphrodisiac can be something which is suggested like kind of mind candy when someone is teased when a fantasy or some desire is kind of teased and pulled out it, it can be the lyricism of some words some well place choice but words that, that then can we're getting really into just, there's a, is there a difference between an aphrodisiac and just a turn on? Well, that's what I'm saying. I think some are solely in the mind's eye and some are physiological. I, I mean, there are entire books written about ancient uses of herbs. I think sometimes there's some things that, that turn you on like all the time, like, you know, I mean, as opposed to like you said, like oysters or green M&Ms or well, whatever. But I mean, like, you know, as every time someone touches you with a feather, like, you know, it, yeah, it totally elicits it. memories of, you know, when you were, like, attacked by birds and it kind well, of really, turned you on. Yeah, we're talking about two different kinds then. We're talking about the psychological, emotional, the music, the candlelight is one side of it. But then, like you said, the actual physical response stuff, mm -hmm. the, you, mm -hmm. you do believe that that stuff can work. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. And I think a lot of uh, uses of herbal aphrodisiacs reflect back on sort of uh, shamanistic practice. Mm -hmm. And a lot of uh, shamanistic herbs were used to kind of free the psyche, free the spirit, and however you want to look at that, I don't think it's just people getting high. I think that really was people getting in tune with a whole different energy within them, and right. that is often a sexual energy. The cops would not believe me when I told them. That. <laughs> yeah. Did you consider herbs. alcohol to be an aphrodisiac, or is that think, sort of apples and oranges kind of a case? Or is that just the lack of judgment? You just lose well, judgment. I mean, I, I think um, alcohol lowers one's inhibitions, and that can be an aphrodisiac. The point that I really want to emphasize is that we need to be very conscious that when we do ingest chemicals of any sort, whether that's chocolate, alcohol, Ecstasy. or... I didn't say it, <laughs> but I mean, whatever kind of chemicals, the even organic chemicals, inhaling rose oil or something, mm. these are chemicals that we are allowing to enter our system and we have to use them responsibly, safely, and really understand how to reduce any kind of possible harm. We really have to understand. What do you got there, JP? Yeah, I don't know, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what does it mean? This? He's been playing with that like all this. episode. What does that mean? <laughs> Mm. That could be considered an aphrodisiac. Yeah, maybe he's <gasps> right maybe there. he's ah. really getting. It's cold. That's all I know. Yeah, you can put it in the freezer, and you can use all kinds of uh, sensations, not necessarily as an aphrodisiac, but to enhance other kinds of fantasy or erotic play. You can use, I mean, obviously ice cubes, but metal objects like this can produce sensations which aren't technically sexual right. in response. How would you, I know this is a little off topic, but how would you use that on JP? Well, I might bend him over and spank his naughty backside. Nice. My naughty backside. Ow! Ooh, ow. Now, Bad you're boy. saying that the holes in that thing are just uh, uh, so, no wind resistance. Yes. <laughs> so how much, how much really is, is, if that was solid, how much is that going to slow down your swing? A lot. Really? Actually, yeah, this really, these, these slots really do decrease. One. Oh, that can be actually quite. Yeah. Oh, 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 <laughs> he thought he was in for the soft touch. Oh, that's that's good television. There's a little wow. <laughs> bit of a soft <laughs> other yeah. side to it. All right. Well, let's take a wow. quick break, and when we come back, we'll uh, talk more fantasies, aphrodisiacs with Miss Barbara Fish, professional dominatrix. You're watching Real Men.
Hey, we've been talking aphrodisiacs and fantasies today on Real Men. We're joined by Miss Barbara Fish, professional dominatrix, DJ, <laughs> performance artist. Mm -hmm. You're just pretty cool. Thanks. We've got your website up now on the screen, I believe. I think that's how it's going to go. What, what okay. would someone find at the website if they checked in? Uh, a little video clip. It's basically um, an ad. Okay, fair that's enough. It's my professional site. My personal site is under construction. But oh, nice. Yeah. Right on. Okay. Need your ass bus? Call me. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of this stuff, JP? Would you like a good spanking on a Saturday night? Ah, uh, sure, why not, man? Uh, I probably wouldn't hire someone to do it for me, you know what I mean? But uh, if my woman was into that, why not, man? I get a little freaky freaky every now and then, you know what I mean? Freaky, <laughs> freaky. My brother drink enough Colt 45, I'd do anything. <laughs> well, it's get, it's oh. getting to be pretty mainstream, though, isn't it, Barbara? It is. It's very mainstream in music videos, in advertising. Mm -hmm. But one thing I need to emphasize is even though it's mainstream, that doesn't necessarily mean that there's a greater understanding of it. Maybe it's more novel and we can see more of it, but that doesn't necessarily necessarily mean that people know what they're doing right. and I think it's imperative that before people start playing and we do call it playing because um, it's supposed to be fun and enjoyable for everyone involved it needs to be safe sane and consensual safe meaning people know how to use equipment mm -hmm. what safe areas of the body are to use and what areas of the body like the to bullhorn avoid. guy you can't just run the bullhorns into the wall without Figuring exactly. things out first. Do you have right. any clients but, like, who are like a lot older? Like yes. Kind of people like, you know, you get the person and who looks like maybe grandpa. Or... Exactly. And that's where safety comes in also. You have to understand people's physical limitations. If someone is wearing contact lenses, you want them to remove those contact lenses before you put a blindfold on them. Right. Because that can scratch the retina. We don't want this to be injurious. Mm -hmm. Whether we can play with pain and other kinds of sensations or not, we want this to be pleasurable. Eroticism is supposed to be pleasurable. But I just want to say, sane people have to be able to consent. Right. Um, so they can't be drunk out of their minds. Not drunk out of your minds or really high. Like, that's or not... crazy. Right. <laughs> there are people, <laughs> but, though, who are... Hey, Scheffler, are you a top or a bottom? Um, I think I, I like to be controlled. All right. Bottom. That's that's a good okay. Hey, get over here. Thanks to Miss well, Barbara Fish for coming in. Check out her time. website. Every Thanks for popping into Real Men. This is where men get real. We're out. You gotta come over here. Go for it. Go for it. Thank you for ratings. We're up three points. Keep going. It's a four. Okay. We're playing. That's sexy, JP. No, this is. This isn't safe and consensual, guys.